Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you are finding a way to embrace the fluctuations between warmth and beautiful sun and rain. I know for me, one of the challenges has been uh, keeping the yard from looking like a, a jungle exhibit in, uh, in, in some sort of uh, terrarium uh, that kids go to. So I'm, I'm doing my best there. Um, but I'm, I'm genuinely thrilled that uh, spring is leaning into summer and we're finding a way to get out and perhaps do a few more things than we were able to during the winter. This last Sunday was a unique Sunday because we as First St. Andrews were worshiping in two different locations. Many of us were at Camp Kimoki, namely youth, young adults, children, families, and the rest of us were here in the sanctuary. And so I told everyone on Sunday that don't think of this as the gathering, but a gathering on that Sunday because we were in two locations, but we were all worshiping, celebrating, and giving thanks that we get to come together as community and maybe even discern a bit more about what it's going to take for us to continue to build and deepen these connections that we have as members of First St. Andrews United Church. In my sermon, I talked about an issue that Paul mentions in his letter to the Corinthians, specifically the problem of wanting to link up or identify with one teacher over against another, right? The creating of factions, which Paul is dealing with throughout his letters. It's not new to our time. It was happening 2,000 years ago, and I have no doubt that it was happening three, four, and 5,000 years ago. There is something uh, in our species, it would seem, that is disposed towards creating factions. And so we always have to protect against it, which is what Paul is trying to do. So in Paul's instructions, Paul asked the community, who are you and why would you choose this or that when it's neither Apollos, which is Paul's counterpart, nor I that is actually doing the work of salvation, but God alone and that God is there, present, and working with everybody for the same vision, for a common purpose. So Paul interrogates the community, although with compassion. And it got me to thinking, and this is specifically what I talked about, what are the levels of awareness at which we are participating on a daily basis? Now, just to get up and go about our day and follow the rules of the road and uh, walk into stores or businesses or places of interest means that we have what certain authors call ordinary awareness, what one of my uh, philosophical mentors refers to as the natural attitude, which means I, a subject, encounter a world of objects that I can either approach, look at, examine, pick up, uh, use in some way, and that that is um, a fixed thing. Now that would be one level of awareness. We'll call it maybe like a sensory level of awareness that is about survival, doing the things that have to be done. But there's a deeper level of awareness that is more encompassing. And it's what we try to approach and even facilitate here at First St. Andrews on Sunday mornings and at other times. That would be spiritual awareness. The spiritual awareness does not dispense with ordinary awareness, but builds on and expands that awareness so that we are not serving the, let us say, devotional objects or interest of ordinary awareness, but are rather putting our ordinary awareness in service to our spiritual awareness. And what is that spiritual awareness about? Well, Paul's talking about that. It is about connecting with God relationally, dynamically, growing in our faith, recognizing that this ego, this I, this ordinary awareness self that is full of fears, that has been traumatized, made to be afraid, unsure, uncertain, that that self is very often driving the vehicle <laughs> that we have to travel through life in. But in order for that to be done 
in the best way, the way that supports the growth of community, life, and transformation. We have to put that awareness in service to our spiritual awareness, which is this deep connection to all our relations, not just other humans, but humans, non-humans, right? The two-leggeds, the four-leggeds, the wingeds, the slithering, the swimming, as our indigenous siblings say, it is all our relations. We are part of a web. That is what I mean by spiritual awareness. And we are connected in that web to Creator. Now, it is hard to maintain that level of spiritual awareness 24 hours a day, which is why we build practices that help us return to that level of awareness so that our levels can be configured properly. We don't want our spiritual awareness to be serving ordinary awareness because that gets it out of order. Instead, we want our ordinary level of awareness, right, that self, to be serving and connected to and learning from our spiritual awareness. And so I believe that's what Paul's pointing to, and I think it has a lot to teach us about how we can successfully build community, despite the difficulties and the terrible things that are happening both near and far in our world. As long as we are able to reconnect with our source, with Creator, with self, with that deeper self, I believe that together we can truly foster something unique, something different, that is transformative, and it's what people are hungering for right now. So, I'm glad that you took a few minutes to join today. Look forward to having you this coming week where we have our pride service. And of course, join me next week for a reflection following that. Take care. Thank you.